video we're going to be talking about how tangent lines can create what are known as circumscribed angles and how the properties that result from that relationship can help us solve for some unknown measures so first let's talk about this tangent radius theorem this says that if you have a tangent line to a circle the radius will always be perpendicular to that line at that point of tangency so that means that we're going to be creating a right angle and then we may even be creating some right triangles. So right triangle properties will also be pretty helpful here. Knowing that uh, radius PQ in this example intersects with this tangent line QR at point Q, then we have a right angle there at point Q. So we have this right triangle where we know two out of three angles. We could add those up, subtract from our total of 180 degrees in any triangle, or knowing complementary relationships in our right triangle here. We could say that angle P and angle R are going to add up to 90, so if we know 60 of it, we could just subtract that from 90 and get 30 degrees for angle R. In the next example, we're going to take off into space and find the distance from some made-up space station here at point E to that uh, horizon point right here at point H. So knowing that the radius of the Earth is about 3,960 miles and knowing our space station's altitude from the surface of the Earth, we can use that information and this property that the radius is going to intersect a line of tangency at a right angle. So we'll be able to just use Pythagorean theorem to solve for our missing side in this right triangle. So again, knowing the radius here, that also means that segment CD here is also a radius, so it must have the exact same measure. And then we know our altitude up to our space station from the surface of our Earth or circle here is 240 miles. We can combine those two measurements on this side to get a final side length over there, uh, about 4,200 miles. And we have this side length right here. So we're just solving for one of the legs in this right triangle. So we'll set up our Pythagorean theorem. Now you could square both these numbers and work with those even really big numbers, but we don't want to complicate things. Let's keep it simple. Let's just use some algebra steps here. Subtract 3,960 squared from both sides and then square root both sides. And most calculators can handle this all in one step. So if you have a calculator that can do that, just type it in. Otherwise, you may have to simplify your exponents here and subtract those two values and then square root in uh, separate steps, and that's okay too. We're rounding to the nearest 10 miles, not 10th, but 10. So 1,399 is going to get rounded up to about 1,400 miles. So that's the length from the space station to the horizon point there. Next, let's get into these circumscribed angles. A circumscribed angle is an angle that's created or drawn outside a shape in this case a circle, and it's created by these intersecting tangent lines. So if you have tangent lines coming off a circle intersecting, they create what's called a circumscribed angle. And its relationship can be defined in the following way. The angle measure here, that circumscribed angle's measure, is going to be supplementary with the central angle's measure in your circle. And then by definition, the arc measure in degrees would also be the same relationship. So the arc measure in degrees is also supplementary to this angle measure because the arc measure and the central angle are the exact same measure. So why are they supplementary? Well, here's a quick way to just prove it. Because we have tangent lines intersecting a radius, we know we have a right angle like we just defined previously. So if we have a 90 degrees here and 90 degrees in this quadrilateral shape, the quadrilateral only has 360 degrees inside of it. So if we subtract what we know right here, 180 degrees, we're going to be left with 180 degrees for these two angle measures. So that's why they're supplementary. One more thing that's also unique about these intersecting tangent lines is that the tangent lines themselves uh, from that angle, that circumscribed angle, back to that point of tangency, their length right there is going to be congruent. Uh, because if we just imagine that we have two triangles here, those triangles are congruent, and so all of their corresponding pieces must also be congruent. 
the quick proof for why those triangles are congruent is because we have right angles here. If we imagine drawing this hypotenuse, those two triangles would share that side. And in a right triangle, well, all we have to do is prove that the hypotenuse and one of its legs are congruent. So here's a same hypotenuse and the radius is the same on each. So we have the leg and hypotenuse congruency. And so those two triangles are congruent. I mean, we could go even crazier and say that uh, this imaginary line is probably bisecting this angle. Therefore, we have angle side angle or we have uh, side angle side. But really, because they're right triangles and because the leg and the hypotenuse are the same, we just call that hypotenuse length congruency. So the two main things are that our uh, circumscribed angle and the central angles measure are supplementary and these tangent line lengths are congruent. Let's practice those two concepts. In this first one, we see a similar diagram. So we know that this central angle right here, represented by 3x, is going to be supplementary with this angle measure represented by x up here. So 3x plus x has to equal 180. Let's combine like terms and divide by 4, and we get the x value of 45. So angle P is 45 degrees, and if we plug 45 in here and triple it, we know that angle Q is 135 degrees. Uh, obviously, angles R and S are right angles or 90 degrees, if that was a question. One more thing, let's uh, try and solve for something involving those tangent lengths. So again, knowing that those tangent lengths are equal, we can set any expressions representing their lengths equal to each other and solve the equation. So for this particular equation, we have a quadratic. Um, there's a few ways to solve quadratics. One would be to use the quadratic formula. Uh, if you subtract 18x from both sides and move it over to the other side, then you have your a and your b terms, and you don't have a c term, so your c value in that quadratic equation would be zero. Uh, so you could do it that way. I just happen to use the factoring method. We could factor out an integer and change our equation or just simplify our equation. It doesn't change our equation. Uh, so instead of 3x squared equals 18x, I have x squared equals 6x. And then I'm going to move my 6x over by subtracting it from both sides. And so now I have my quadratic equation where it's set equal to 0. We do that when we use our factoring method. What essentially we're trying to do is find the factors that make 0. So if I factor x out of both these terms, then I can factor it into x times the quantity x minus 6. You can always check your factoring by distributing it back in or multiplying. So x times x is x squared and x times negative 6 is negative 6x, so I know I factored correctly. And then now I just play this game called finding the zeros. Uh, any number times a zero is going to be zero, so if this first term is zero, the whole thing is zero. Or if this second expression equals zero, then the whole thing equals zero. So I have two possible solutions. Uh, if I set x equal to zero out here, then zero times anything is going to be zero, so one possible solution is zero. And then inside, to make that zero, I would say that x is 6 because 6 minus 6 is 0. And so another solution would be positive 6. So I have two possible solutions. It tends to happen when we have a quadratic equation. I'm going to ignore my first solution because if I set it equal to 0, then I have a length of 0. And I know that that's not true here. I have a length of something. So let's instead use the, the solution of 6. Let's plug it back in so that we can find the length of AB. So plug it back into this expression here. So let's square 6 first, and then multiply by 3, and we get our length of 108. All right, so a couple of different things. Circumscribed angles are supplementary to central angles or the corresponding arcs. Uh, and the tangent lines created in that similar diagram are also congruent. And... The tangent radius theorem, which got us to that right triangle to begin with, saying that the radius is perpendicular to a tangent line at that point of tangency.